So what we're going to do is go through the entire book in about 30 minutes or so, if I can keep uh, myself from not talking too much. We'll go through each chapter of the book, brief review of what we've already been through. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. So here we go, the whole book in about a half hour. The purpose of this group here, I'll use my pointer, Cito Veritas, that is Latin, it's a phrase I made up. It means to inspire truth. We are here in this group, but also in the world to learn what truth is, that's the point. The most important feature of this and part of it, a huge part of the book, is this idea called the hard problem of consciousness. Scientists don't know where con what consciousness is, scientists, scientists don't know where consciousness comes from. I make a point in the book and they're never gonna find out. There's reasons why that is. You, you are a soul. And that's the most important premise for the entire book. When people do religion, they usually think of it in terms of I'm a body. You're a soul. All the teachings are pointed towards you being a soul. If you prefer the word consciousness, because soul is too religious for some people, consciousness is sufficient. Scientists know we have it. We know we have it. We experience consciousness. We just don't know where it comes from. Okay, so the whole purpose of the book is to put it all together and show that all the rules in religion and all the spiritual philosophies are talking about that which is consciousness or that which is soul. What you are not is a physical body. You are not a physical being. You are a spiritual being having a physical experience. For our purposes, this is what the ego is. The ego is the false self. The ego is when you think you're a body. The ego is when you think other people are bodies. Ego doesn't mean cocky. Americans often think ego is really arrogant people. No, ego is people who are focused on the flesh. That's what it is. Spiritual people are focused on the development of the soul. Ego is focused on the development of the flesh. That's an important distinction, and you'll see it's all the way throughout this group. So we're here to inspire truth. Truth, according to the Tao, is found inside of you. The pathway is inside of you. All teachings, all wisdom is inside of you. I believe this is coded in your DNA. We'll get to that later. Chapter two, organized chaos. This is something that uh, is a scientific theory. By the way, the first 10 or 11 chapters are all physical oriented. They're science oriented to back up the spiritual stuff, which we're going to be going through later. Organized chaos. It's something called chaos theory. Scientists have known about this for about 50 years. Within chaos theory, it's, there's something called the butterfly effect. Now, Weatherman first figured out the, the butterfly effect by, by testing a bunch of data inside a computer. And what they were able to determine is that if a butterfly flaps its wings, it can affect the weather system. A tornado can be caused on the other side of the world, uh, according to the butterfly effect, if a butterfly just flaps its wings. Now, that's really hard to believe, but it's been shown again and again to be possibly true. So why is that important? The world is inherently unpredictable. This is what chaos theory is. It's inherently unpredictable. It's extremely difficult to predict how things are going to go. That probably should feel like your life a little bit. Some chaos, and it's pretty hard to predict. When things are going well, all of a sudden, some, all of a sudden something changes, and uh, now all of a sudden there's chaos. Okay. Well, here's the cool thing about chaos theory. When scientists graph this, when they graph data within chaos theory, they end up finding a pattern. Can you see what this pattern is? To me it looks like infinity, but it also happens to look like a butterfly. <clears throat> Why is this important? Because this is the organized quality of it. The world is chaotic, but there's actually a method to the madness. Whatever you're going through, there's a purpose and there's a meaning behind it. And there's a way to figure it all out, which is what the rest of the book is about. Three, Einstein equals mc squared. Everybody's heard this, equals mc squared. Very few people practically apply it. What is everything is energy? We're used to seeing each other as bodies. We're used to seeing each other as, as flesh beings. What we really are, though, is trillions and trillions and trillions of atoms. And if I could break your body down to its constituent parts, you're not one thing. Your body's made up of trillions and trillions of things. That table is made up of trillions of, th of things, and that couch, and the pillow, and everything in this room, it seems so fleshy, but it's not. It's actually all energy. Because each one of these atoms is actually <clears throat> a smaller particle and electrons revolving around it, packed together, sort of like a snowball. And if you dig into this atom, this is where you find the quantum particles, smaller and smaller uh, quantum particles, smaller and smaller pieces of the atom, 
And when scientists keep digging, they find something called string theory, or at least they have uncovered something that they consider to be an important possible answer to all this. And in string theory, there's two different types of vibrating energy, open looped energy and closed loop energy. And they're just teeny tiny vibrating little loops of energy. Everything in the world is made up of this. We can't see it, but we're experiencing it all the time. So at the base level of all things, we're just vibrating little loops of energy. That's equals mc squared. Atoms. Well, atoms, when they're packed together, uh, they're, they're called vessels of light. Why? Atoms absorb energy and they release energy. That's what they do. Your body is actually best thought of as little cups in which energy goes in and energy can come out of them. There's lots of different types of energy. We'll be going through this uh, during the rest of the group. But your body absorbs energy and it releases energy. And it's doing that all the time whether you know it or not. This is very important because this is what souls are doing. We're absorbing energy, we're releasing energy. And you'll see when we get into the spiritual philosophies again, that's a very important feature. Five, balance. The scientist, uh, physicist Niels Bohr, over 100 years, huh? well, 80 years ago or so, developed something called complementary theory, the complementary principle. And the world isn't made up of opposites. The world is made up of complements. He demonstrated this scientifically, but for our purposes, it's the same thing. Shortness isn't the opposite of tallness. Shortness is a complement to tallness because they're on the same scale. Shortness is just the absence of height. Cold and hot aren't opposites. They're complements. They're actually on the same scale. Cold is just the absence of heat. In the spiritual world, you have awareness and lack of awareness. In the spiritual world, when you're not aware, you're dead or you're asleep. When you are awake spiritually, you're alive or you are awake. They're complements to each other, and there's just different degrees of this. Just like with temperature, there's different degrees. The same thing in the spiritual world. There's degrees of understanding. There's different degrees of growth, and that's actually some of what relativity is, which we'll do in a second. So the world is all about balance. We know this with the way mental health works. When we aren't feeling good, what do scientists or, or pharmacologists call it? A chemical imbalance, okay? Well, the whole, whole purpose of this world that we're in ultimately is to learn how to balance ourselves. And when you're balanced in your brain, you feel at peace. When you're balanced in your heart, you feel at peace. It's actually the whole goal. We're all balancing. Six, Hebb's Law. Hebb was a um, neuroscientist about 60 years ago or so. And he developed a concept, which is now known as Hebb's Law, neurons that fire together, wire together. What it basically means is your brain has a, is like a computer system. And whatever you program into it is what ends up happening to you. You are what you thought, says Buddha. Well, that's true, because if you think about certain things in a certain way, your brain practices this. This is called practice makes perfect. Whatever you think about, you get good at. We're, I'm speaking English. You guys are all understanding me. Why is that? When we were born, people taught us English. We practiced it. Any of you speak Russian? Why not? You didn't practice it, but could you have learned it? And over the last 33 weeks or so, if we had practiced um, learning Russian, would we be able to speak it now? Yeah, a lot better, because if you practice it, then you become it. If you practice being judgmental, you can get good at that. All the isms. If you practice being racist, because that's what people teach you, well, then you get good at it. If you practice being sexist, same sort of thing. If you practice hate, you get good at it. If that's what everybody around you, do, around you is doing, you get good at it. Buddha calls this conditioned ignorance. We get taught the wrong stuff. If you practice math and you study math, you'll get better at it. Well, what if you want to come to know truth in Sito Veritas? Well, if you practice it, you'll good, get good at it. Jesus, seek and you will find. That's not, that's not conf confusing. That's, he doesn't equivocate. Seek and you may find. No, seek and you will find. Because if it's important you to find truth, you'll find truth. And if you practice it in your head, you get good at it. Things like forgiveness. If you practice forgiveness, you get good at it. Not on day one or day two. You gotta stick with it. Exercise. If you work out a lot, you'll get fitter. It, this is just logical. Well, it happens that way in the brain. If you would like to come to know truth, seek it. You'll find it. You'll get better at it.